Welcome back everyone to another episode of Fear of a Flat Planet presented by Toyota. I'm here today with Liam Gill who's on both the slope and the pipe next gen teams. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm super stoked to still be snowboarding after everything's been closed, you know. For sure. Everything's closed around here and like all the mountains and COP still open, right? Yeah. Alberta is the last thing standing, so. <laughs> yeah. And BC's now shut down like lockdown like that yeah yeah that's so. crazy because usually wish list stays open and then do you know if they're gonna open the glacier i have no idea but sunshine should be open for like may long so i don't know who knows it could shut down tomorrow all of Alberta, so <laughs> that would suck but it's yeah. sick that it's still open man mm-hmm. uh man how was your season i wanna like how have you been lately what you been up to um season's been pretty busy for having a pandemic for sure um even just staying in calgary is pretty busy you know i live here and cop has been um they have a pretty good course with the half pipe and slope and since i'm on both teams some days i spend a couple hours in the half pipe and then a couple hours on the course so i been pretty busy and um recently the weather's been pretty beat on the on the courses so they're doing a rebuild and there should be a spring camp in a couple days here which i'm That's super sick. I, think, I think i'm coming out there mm-hmm. so yeah and then i've also been super fortunate to make a connection with um the snowboarders up in fort simpson um i'm very proud to be part of the lidley q first nations and i think it's very important to represent my culture in snowboarding so yeah yeah, that's sick, man. That's really cool. I, I, w- I wanted to ask you, actually, is there anything, like, different about growing up, like, as First Nations in snowboarding, or you think you kind of came into it the same way as everyone else? I think I came into it the same way as everyone else, and um, I'd really like to represent to the other kids up north, you know, that I am one of them, and I can snowboard so they can as well, you know. Yeah, that's sick, and that's that's really good for you. Mm. Um, other than that, like, uh, I know this season you started competing in World Cups in half pipe, mm-hmm. uh, and I wanted to know like what that first experience with those bigger competitions like going. I know you were in Aspen. How was that for you this season? Man, so have to- it's crazy. Just coming off of like competing in like national events for like um, since I was thirteen, like since I got my fist license, and then all of a sudden I'm competing against Scotty and Sean White. Like what, you know, it's pretty crazy. And then um, I got to um, compete in the rodeo slope style. I just kind of snuck in and um, yeah, no, all the world cups are crazy. It's like nothing I ever thought I'd get to. So yeah. 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 Um, The big dogs. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and some of those people have like invented tricks in the half pipe, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. Same, same yeah. way in, in like in slope for me this year competing. Oh with, yeah. You know, just Mark and Seb being on the national team. Yeah, for it's sure. like they invented like some of the tricks that everyone does. Like even just going to like Sauce Bay for a training camp, and then there's pros literally left and right. You're like, yeah. oh yeah, it's a, it's a different atmosphere. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, well this season. Okay, do you know how many tricks you've learned in the pipe this season? I have no clue. I, all I know is I had um, – I landed one nine prior to this season, and I had two sevens, I think. So, okay. I don't know. I just kind of – ever since Sauce Bay, it's just been like bang, 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 and I don't know. That Yeah, and slope too. Yeah, today's been a pretty, or not today, this year has been pretty darn good for snowboarding. I don't know why. A lot of people, like, you know, when Craig said the um, pandemic progression in the big area at X Games? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I think, yeah, I don't know. I think that's what it was, just staying away from snowboarding for so long, like not even being injured. It just made me want to, you know, snowboard. It just made me that much more hungry, I guess. 
Uh, what about the back to back tens in pipe? I want that is like Man. that's so like I, a lot higher level than a lot of like what a lot of people can do in pipe. I actually like I I landed it once before, but it wasn't like that good, and um, I didn't want to post it because the cab ten was just not good whatsoever. <laughs> I like fully two hands down, like I'm fully compressed in the transition, and um. I just wanted to get it better and it took like another day or so because of the conditions. But once the conditions were right and I was feeling it, it, it happened, but I don't know. It was pretty crazy because I learned the cab 10 and sauce was able to do a couple more during the, when the half pipe was really good in Calgary. And then I just newly learned the front dub 10 and I was like, I got to piece these together. Like I wanted to do, like I've always wanted to do back to back tens in the pipe. Yeah, that, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah, it looks like you've been doing so well. Uh, but okay. going back, I wanted to know how you first got into snowboarding. You always start riding at COP or? Um, so when I was a kid, my mom always made sure I was like, you know, soccer, hockey, volleyball. Yeah, football. always. Like, always making sure I was busy doing sports and stuff. So, um, as I was two and she put me on skis. Oh yeah. And um, once we, I started skiing for like a year or so. And I was like, yeah, once I was like two and three skiing, I saw my dad snowboarding. I oh, think yeah. every kid kind of idolizes their dad. And I was like, damn, like I really want to snowboard. And then I asked Santa for a snowboard and then he, <laughs> he laughed at me and I was like crying and stuff. I was like, oh, Santa, <laughs> But then I ended up getting that snowboard and then, um, yeah, I started at four and then kind of kept doing a bunch of different sports. Like I, I stopped skiing when I was 12. So really? I always wanted you to get back on a pair of skis. Was that, sorry? You did both for a while. Yeah. And I did a bunch of sports. And then once I was probably around 13 or 14, I kind of focused more on snowboarding. So did you ever ski competitively? Yeah, I used to do like the um, free riding, like the the backcountry contests and stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, I qualified. I qualified third once for like the U thirteen heat, okay. and then I I dished finals to go snowboarding. <laughs> Good yeah. choice. Yeah, I couldn't, okay. couldn't give up the opportunity to snowboard. Oh, that's funny. Okay, and then when when did you first start competing on a snowboard? Um, I was, mm, you know, like the little like provincial events, like they had like the mini half pipe and like the little tiny boxes. Like yeah. I can't even really remember. The ASA ones. Yeah. The little ASA events. And I've actually judged a couple of those just because I was like, damn, like I used to, I used to be one of those kids, you know, trying to make sure they had the experience I have, which was pretty cool. And then there was like the Royal events and then I started getting into like the slope style stuff when I was, I think my first time I was eight or nine, I think not too sure. Uh, your sponsors. Um, did you start on, like, I think you're on lib tech now, correct? Yeah. I'm on lib tech. Yeah. Uh, did you start on a lib tech board? Have you written? Yeah. Well, so my first board was, Oh, what was it? A Burton something. Um, I know I had a Burton <laughs> chopper. It's actually above me right there. Yeah. 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 It might have been a couple years older than that one. It yeah. was a chopper, though. It had, like, little green radios on it. It was pretty cool. And then that's the only snowboard my dad ever sold, and it was my first one. Oh. And then my second snowboard was – it's okay. It was a burden. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then my second snowboard was a LibTech. And yeah. ever since that, I've been kind of – like, I've had, like, an Arbor and a Lobster, but – Ever since I've just had lib tech, lib tech, lib tech, lib tech. And then I've been fortunate enough to get a lib tech sponsor, which is pretty cool. And then bent metal as well. Correct. And then bent metal as well. Yeah, bent metal. Picked up bent metals because I used to ride unions and then um ended up they ended up being like super similar and I, I like them a lot. So yeah. that's sick. That's sick. So you rode you're riding now like literally what you rode your whole life. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's pretty that's crazy. Cool. And then so how many actual different models of board have you written then or have you written 
like the same. Um, I was on the box knife for like three years. Um, this year and last year I've been on the TRS. Um, and then I had a couple Travis Rice, like um, the kid Travis Rice models for a couple of years. Um, and then I had it. My first one was a skate banana. So I went from skate banana to like the Travis Rice series to, oh, and then I had a utility knife. That was my first like big boy board, you know, oh, like yeah. amber. It was actually stiff. Um, that's where I really learned how to like actually ride. And then I've kind of just, I pick a model for a few years and then kind of move on. But I think I'm going to stick with the TRS for a while. Yeah, it looks like you've been killing it on that board. Uh, but would you be down, like, you know, if LibTech sent you a board to just, like, try a completely different model and, like, go into a competition with it? Or would you rather just stick to that board that you know? Um, I'd totally be down to, like, try the new technology because that's what I've done, like, three times. Yeah. Because um, it's been recommended. Um, but, like, right before a contest, I don't know, but – um, I'm definitely down to like try like new things like new technology and new stuff like that for sure for sure okay um, and you were on riders on board before next gen correct are you still um, I was on riders and then academy and then next gen so yeah so uh, do they I don't really know but do riders on board do like much trips like out of country Um, I've gone to the states with them before um, and then they would go to like national contests and stuff rather than that. They would go to the mountains sometimes, like we go to kicking horse and stuff. Yeah. But I don't think we've ever really had like training camps, like jump camps and stuff like that. It's more so like teaches you how to have fun and stuff. Yeah. So this year would be your first year, like traveling to like Europe. Or oh, hundred. Yeah. hundred percent. I did have that one where I went with you to Sweden. That was my first time ever leaving North America or yeah. And then after that, I've been kind of in and out of North America. For okay. doing so how was it this year with, well, first of all, with COVID it's affected everyone's season, but like traveling out of country for those competitions for the first time, other than Sweden and for half pipe ones too. Um, pretty crazy, you know, spending my whole like snowboarding time, like in Canada, then next thing I know, like I'm on the other side of the planet. Snowboarding is pretty crazy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I also wanted to talk about after this season of competing, maybe that's changed your perspective a little bit. Uh, what are your like, and your future goals in snowboarding? Where do you want to go with it? Do you just want to mm -hmm. have fun or you want to be like, Super of course I want to have fun like all snowboarding is to me is fun and stuff like yeah. that like I, I think competing and you know putting a little like pressure on myself and trying to be the best snowboarder I can be is just like kind of like a cherry on top um but I definitely really like to go to the Olympics it's probably been a gold mine since I was like since I stepped on a snowboard for sure yeah. I don't even think there was Olympics in snowboarding then, but I always wanted to go to the Olympics. Either it was yeah, hockey or whatever, whatever sport I did. And then the more I snowboarded, yeah, I definitely, it's like the end goal. But either than that, I just want to, you know, keep snowboarding in my life, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whatever it is, coaching or whatever, being a rep or owning part of a company, I just want to have snowboarding like in my life because – yeah i would probably say the same so do you want to i would it would it be a goal for you to go to the olympics for both pipe and slope yeah for sure <laughs> i got some work cut ahead of me so or some work yeah. ahead of me if i want to do that, that would, but that would that'd be cool anyone ever done that? i think i know jan sheer went for slope in uh sochi he did I, yeah okay. but i don't know if he went i don't know if he did half pipe the same year yeah well so we think no one's done it at the same time um, i'm not too sure that'd be cool 
That'd be super cool. That would, that would, that would definitely be sick. Okay. And then what's your thoughts on those like competitions, like X games due to her, uh, would, is that something you want to do? Like, Oh, a hundred percent. And then 100%. what about, I know a lot of people are getting into like the backcountry side of snowboarding, something like natural selection. Mm-hmm. You want to do it all or kind of focus on. I'd love to do it all. I mean, like I've always tried to like, you know, be the best snowboarder I can be, whether it's this or that or this or that. I like the only reason I like, I kind of rode stuck with half pipe and slope is because I don't know. I just wanted to ride everything. Yeah. I made sure I was just riding rails, riding this, riding that. So I don't know. I haven't spent too much. Like I, I've never gone out in like the actual back country. Um, definitely something on my, my bucket list. That's something I definitely want to do. Yeah, and I know there's some spots out at, at like Sunshine and like the yeah and stuff like that. And have you ridden much of that? Or are you kind of like always in the park? Just um, on like a regular Sunshine day, usually don't spend the whole day in the park. Like I'll definitely go rip some terrain and stuff, but I've never gone actually out like backcountry stuff. Okay, okay, and you do a lot of filming too. Um. Yeah, filming is definitely something you kind of gotta gotta get into. It's like yeah, you think? I don't know. It's like such a good way of like um, expressing, you know, snowboarding. You know, you can express snowboarding in your style for sure, but I don't know. It's like I don't know. It's hard to explain. You always want to get clips out there and just like showcase mm-hmm. your snowboarding. Yeah. Well, speaking of showcasing your snowboarding, I know you have a lot of TikTok followers. <laughs> yeah, I've been kind of on the TikTok grind. I, I always used to make fun of TikTok, and then I posted that one video of me going up the T-bar. In locks. Off, yeah. It just blew up, and then I just couldn't stop making TikToks, and then now it's just kind of... So, yeah, you're big into that. And have you actually gained like a lot of Instagram followers from that as well? Um, I don't think so, but the video of me going up the T bar on Instagram also did really good. So yeah, it's kind of both of my social medias are going up, but TikTok's definitely the one that's going up. up. It's just kind of like mess around, you know, don't really <laughs> post anything serious. It's just kind of to make people laugh, make people's days better. So yeah. And that's what seems to do well, actually. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't really care about me spinning a bunch of times. They'd rather see some relatable video that they'd laugh to. Yeah. Like, can you backflip? <laughs> can you backflip? But can you backflip? Yeah. Stuff like that. Okay. Well, um, I don't think I have anything else for you. It was nice talking to you. Yeah. It was awesome talking. Yeah. Uh, I got a few thank yous to say. We got to thank Skull Candy um and canada snowboard for putting on this podcast uh anyone listening can go to the canada snowboard website canadasnowboard.ca you can check out all of the gear that they have uh the masks have been the favorite i'm sure you have a few of those oh yeah i got a bunch Um, sweaters toques t-shirts anything like that and thank you for joining me today thank you it was a pleasure talking